कृष्णा कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Krishna Krishna Hari Hare Hari Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hare
I have a question for our kirtaniers in the front row here. How many of you are from Bangalore? How many of you want to become from Bangalore? Now, all of you that are from Bangalore, I heard yesterday that Varada Krishna said that if you're going to be part of the Kirtan party, you have to chant eight rounds a day. How many of you in the Kirtan party from Bangalore chant every day, eight rounds a day? What? Whenever you sing, you chant eight rounds. Oh. Did you chant eight rounds today? She's honest. Not yet. That's the just now coming answer. Okay. I like that policy. It shouldn't just be when you chant. It should be part of the experience because the person chanting has responders. And the consciousness carries through the chanting. So I'm going to put in a word to Varda. In fact, you can pass it on to him, okay? My request to Varda Krishna, thank you for visiting. Please make this change in your policy. And those of you that have some leadership role in presidents, in temples, please consider. I have a few temples in mind to make a personal request. But it's, it's a nice policy. Purity is the force, right? The Holy Name is powerful, but we don't want clouds blocking the power of the sun. Is Varsana here? Not yet. Did she go home? Did she leave already? She, she downstairs. Okay. I'm going to address something specifically with her in mind, but you can repeat it to her afterwards. <laughs> She reminded me that one of the three Vaishnava Acharyas recently had his star constellation just yesterday or day before, and that he was born one month before, and so she was like, excited to learn about that, thinking that it'd be nice to honor because we're honoring a number of Sri Vaishnavas. So, there's a Sanskrit name, Jamatri Muni. Jamatri Muni has a Tamil name, which I can't say, that, but she can say. And his name is referenced in Paramatma Sandarbha. Jiva Goswami was the author of the Sandarbhas, and one of the Sandarbhas is Paramatma Sandarbha. In one section of the Paramatma Sandarbha, Jiva Goswami is explaining Jiva Tattva. And, you know, I'm mentioning it for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons is that we have also been discussing what do Madhvas say, what do Sri Vaishnavas say? So now we know that Sri Vaishnavas have a one-to-one -one correspondence with 
Gaudiyas in the position of the jiva, at least some one aspect of the position of the jiva. And we also heard that when the deity of Ranganath was brought back to Sri Rangam after the Muslim invasion and one king or the son of the king and his general got up a big army and drove the Turkish soldiers out that had been occupying for some time. The king of Vijayanagara invited Jayatirtha to preside over the ceremony which was restoring the Ranganath deity back in Sri Rangam. And she shared with me, Varsana shared with me, the Sri Vaishnava Acharya that restored respectability and sensibility and the teachings of Vishishtadvaita of Ramanujacharya was the same Jamatri Muni. You get the message? Okay. I'm just speaking about Jamatri Muni. So there's, I find it heart moving. Now that there, she asked, a, the heart moving is there, it's nice if there's respect for other traditions, regardless of their doctrine, respect. We heard it several times and repeating it again. Now, she asked a question, she's not gonna be here tomorrow. But uh, there's too much to talk about today, so we'll do it tomorrow. But she'll hear the recording. Her question to me, he'd like me to speak about tomorrow, is where do you draw the line? Respect, okay. Cross-pollination, where do you draw the line? Where do you remain faithful to the line in which you're situated while offering respect to others that have a different teaching. We heard yesterday, no, yes, yesterday, day before yesterday, we heard, I forget one, Jayatirtha was invited to, the, to be a speaker at the return of the same <clears throat> Vijaya Raja, that's his name? Vidya Ranya. Vidya? Vidya Ranya. Okay. When he was returning <clears throat> from a northern expedition or excursion, he was invited to be a speaker. And he is from a different teaching, which is okay. And he was asked to be the speaker of a big assembly in honor of the return of this Advaitin Acharya that was the respectable um, guru for the king. And he spoke about Madhva's teachings at that assembly. So there's, there's, there's a place for, and there's a, a culture of respect and then, you know, tomorrow we'll discuss where do you draw the line. And specifically, how does it pertain to us? You know, in, in ISKCON, how do we regard, et cetera, et cetera. Sim different, similar but different, was something that I learned yesterday that I didn't know before yesterday. I know, I'm learning lots of things. We, we saw yesterday the deity of Narayana that um, Ramanujacharya discovered from a dream. He had a dream in which a form of Narayana was buried within the earth 
And the deity Narayan said, I've been waiting for you, please come and relieve me of being this buried deity. And so he did and so forth and so on. So we, we saw that deity yesterday. Chaluva Narayana. Chaluva means? Chaluva means? Dear. My dear. Revered. No. Dear. 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 Oh, the dear one. I thought you said weird. <laughs> I wasn't going to repeat that. <laughs> Weird Narayan. <laughs> Revered, dear Narayan. So, compliments of one of our assembled devotees. Uh, I was given a special tour of the, of the whole, of the deities and the, the histories of those deities and kind of remarkable. And so something that I learned during that exchange and then reconfirmed, this deity has a long history. How long? Lord Brahma worshipped this deity. According to what I heard yesterday, the deity wasn't carved by someone. Most deities are carved by someone. This deity was a self-manifesting deity. Though some of you, maybe all of you, some of the older folks even I saw going up those long stairs to the Yoga Nishringa temple, did you understand that that deity, the Yoga Nishringa deity, like Radharaman manifesting from a Shalagram Shila, that deity manifested from a Shalagram Shila? Maybe you didn't, maybe you knew that, I didn't. In the basket over there was a number of shilas that Prahlad Maharaj worshipped, Shalagram shilas. And one morning one of the Shalagram shilas was missing and instead it was a pretty large deity. Self-manifesting from one of the Shalagram shilas that Prahlad Maharaj was worshipping. Pretty amazing. And you know, from a different yuga, obviously. So, <clears throat> similarly, not only from a different yuga, but a self-manifesting deity worshipped by Lord Brahma, and the four Kumaras, sons of Brahma, brought that deity to the earthly realm, from the Satyaloka realm. And that deity was eventually entrusted to Ikshvaku, in Ayodhya, and the deity was being worshipped by Ikshvaku and others in the line of Ikshvaku. The deity moved from Ayodhya when Kusha, one of the two sons of Ramachandra, Kusha, daughter, married from the Surya dynasty which, in which he was, a woman who is from the Chandra dynasty. And from that Chandra dynasty, with her went the deity to Dwaraka, or eventually to Dwaraka, because it's Dwaraka was manifested a little bit later. And it, but within the Chandra dynasty. And the deity that we saw yesterday was being worshipped by the Chandra dynasty. Shortly before Krishna had the plan to depart this world, Krishna and Balaram, riding on the back of Garuda, transferred the deity to Melkote, where the deity was being worshipped for a long time, and then the deity became neglected, and Ramanuja came along. And the deity appeared, that where the deity appeared, that's where the deity had origin is. So it had long history. And, you know, a little 
compatibility between the Surya dynasty and the Chandra dynasty and with the wife went the deity. Interesting history. Here's some more just sharing from our visits yesterday and, and before that. Um, there were, we heard that there was a king in Melkote area where he had his kingdom that Ramanujacharya was invited by the king to um, come to visit his palace and Nambi and here's a little what does Nambi mean? I, this is another nice thing. Nambi means personification of all virtuous and righteous qualities blended with beauty and grace. Isn't that nice? Nambi. How'd you like that name? Personification of all virtuous and righteous qualities blended with beauty and grace. Sounds like Vaikuntha. So, Nambi, Brahmana, advised Ramanujacharya, don't decline the king's invitation. Go, and if he becomes inclined to Vaishnava teachings, he would be uh, a, a very good candidate to assist us and assist you in spreading the message of Sri Vaishnavism or Vaishishta Advaita. So he went and because, because uh, the, the kingdom in which he was the ruler was the kingdom Too many names, right? The Hoysala Kingdom. So we're going to go to the temple shortly of Chena Keshava. Chena Keshava was a deity that was installed in his kingdom, the, the kingdom of the king that Ramanuja met. His name was Bitti Dev. Bitti means one of his fingers was broken or cut by the Muslim rulers to mark him as like untouchable. And so his wife said, you're planning a big festival for the Jains, but you're going to be disappointed because they won't come. Because after all, your name is Bitti. One of your fingers is cut. They won't come. Ramanujan not only came, but he cured his daughter, and the king became his disciple. The king was given the initiated name Vishnu Vardhana. Vardhana means one who expands. Vishnu Vardhana. So Vishnu Vardhana was given the assignment after some time by Ramanujacharya, his guru, to establish five Vishnu temples within his kingdom. And this temple that we're visiting is one of those five. So I bet you'd like to know what those five are. Oh, four. Five. Five. This is one. Nambi Narayana. We visited already. Nambi Narayana in Tondanur, the place where we were before we came to Melkote. In Tondanur, the king had an outpost kind of administrative headquarters. And in that place, Tondanur, Nambi Narayana was established. We saw that deity. And this is the Chanuva. Dear Narayana, 
There's two more. It says pump punch. That there's. It says punch in their iron temples. And this is one of those five, but I only see four listed here. Vira Narayan is in this area. We're not going there because it's too far away. Kirti Narayana, too far away. We're not going there. And this temple was, was the last, it says Pancha, but it's four. What's, how's the math work? This is the, Chelu, this is the uh, Chenna Keshava who's also called Vijaya Narayana, originally called Vijaya Narayan, and now Chennakesha. And the Cheluva Narayan was the one whom we saw yesterday in Melkote. Ah, thank you. So it is five. So, that the king, Established this place, and you you should have received sh show of hands. How many received that little PDF that tell, gives the history of this temple? Some of you did. Some of you did not. It was sent a long time ago. What? It was sent a few days ago. We'll resend it. Maybe it's missed in the deluge of messages. Okay, I gave it to him yesterday to send. I had earlier. Oh, you were the... Uh... Okay, okay, you're supposed to send. Okay. Very soon you'll get a PDF that gives the history of this place. And according to the history of this place, it took over a hundred years to build the temple. So obviously the king wasn't the one that finished it. It was his son or grandson. And the temple is, uh, is very elaborate and, and ornate. Um, I, it's something I learned in the car ride up here. The kingdom known as Hoi Sala is named after the king that started this. He is, his name was Sala, and Hoi means like something like fantastic or wow or great, like ooh, Hoi Sala. So the kingdom was named after the founder, and the founder is said to have been fearless and heroic. So when we go inside, th there's in this PDF that you didn't get, and when you do get it, it's a, it's a BTG article from 1992, where a, a disciple of Prabhupada, who was a book distributor, Mataji, moved to India after some years, and she was writing articles for Back to Godhead by visiting holy places. And this is one of the places that she visited, and the article that gives some history. So in the temple, there's a picture of a king that's, you know, socking, having a wrestling match with a lion, because it's said that he, he, he did things like that. He was a very powerful and great hero. And then so the kingdom was named after him, Oyusala, and it lasted for several hundred years. Powerful person. And... The king, and he was a Jain. He was a Jain. And over the period of time, the king that, that Ramanujacharya visited, Bitti, was um, not exactly a Jain follower, but he was following the custom of his predecessors. And that's when he invited, the, was planning to invite the Jains to come, and his wife said they won't come. And he consulted with a leader amongst the Jains who said we, he won't come. And he was really upset. But when Ramanuja came, he came. On the advice of one local Brahmin there. And 
The, then the king was given the service of building five Vishnu temples, this being one of them. So that's a little history. Rich history. Now, after some time, oh yeah, somewhere in, in the temple, there's, there's in ornate carvings. One of the ornate carvings is showing some dancing ladies because the king's wife was particularly skilled in dancing. So she's depicted on the walls of the temple, along with other dancers, because she was Gandharva-like in her dancing skill. I forget her name. It starts with an S. Anyway. Sometime after the temple was built, there was another invasion by, Tur by Muslim soldiers and they smashed part of the temple. So it had to be rebuilt. And this outer structure, this Gopuram structure that you probably saw riding the bus coming up here, that's part of the new construction and the temple itself is restored pretty much as it was. It's, it's a d very different style. Very different style. So there's a few other things I wanted to share. Yeah. Why are we here? We're here because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came here. This is part of today and this afternoon and tomorrow is going to be focusing on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's why we're here. I mean, in addition to what Ramanujacharya established and this temple was built, one of the uh, one of the acharyas in Madhva's line, Vaidiraj Tirtha. You remember Vaidiraj Tirtha? We visited his place, or not place, his the temple. He also came to visit this temple in Belur. And when he came, it just so happened that there was a big Rathiyatra festival going on. And the local priests didn't pay him any heed. They knew that he had come. You know, it's not etiquette. It doesn't matter what ism you're part of. You offer respect, and they didn't. So he didn't. He didn't invite himself in. He just stayed in the outskirts. And when the festival was going to happen, and they put the deity on the Rath cart, the deity, the Rath cart wouldn't move. Pull as they might, the Rath cart wouldn't move. And then they realized they made a boo-boo. You know, it's, it's an offense, not just a boo-boo. They made Vaishnava Aparat. And so they felt very, very sorry, besides their, their festival couldn't take place because of their offense. They're, likely there's other consequences. So they went and made profuse apologies. And they asked Vaidiraj if he could do something so the deity could move. <laughs> and so he spontaneously composed a prayer it's a celebrated prayer amongst his writings, requesting the Lord to come quickly, come quickly. And immediately the chariot started to move as he was reciting this prayer that later became reported in one of his Vaidiraj Tirtha's writings here in this place. So another example of different sampradayas, but respect and then wanting to worship forms of the Lord, as Madhvas like to do. So that's a little background. I'm sure I'm forgetting some important things. But that's the background of the place where we are, and a little bit why we are at the place where we are. And the plan for this morning is 
to just do a little 30,000 feet overview of what happened before we got here. Or, you know, in, in previous years, we made South India pilgrimage following the path of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I just wanted to cover a little bit of that. That's our topic. <clears throat> Most of us know that there's this understanding that Bhagavad Gita is the undergraduate, Bhagavatam is the graduate, and Chaitanya Charitamrita is the postgraduate study. You've heard that one before. So here's a little bit, drilling down on that one a little bit. In, in Bhagavad Gita, there's Krishna's words, because it's Bhagavad Gita. Krishna speaks, Bhagavad Gita. And the, the beginning, the entry point of Bhagavad Gita is second chapter of teachings. And in those teachings, he is giving us this fundamental understanding that we're not the body, we're spirit soul. Chapter 2, I mean, chapter 2, text 13, that's who we are, spirit soul. And then the rest of the teachings, you, we have an idea what they are, but he's teaching the yoga system, the conclusion of which is 1866. Now, this very important verse in Bhagavad Gita, this is a side note, I don't want you to get distracted, but acharyas in the line of Ramanujacharya, one particular one, Govinda Raja, was a celebrated commentator on Ramayana, and one of his statements is that Ramayana is an exposition or expanded explanation of that verse. In Sri Vaishnavism, it's called the Charama Sloka, the essence verse of Bhagavad Gita, of course, and the essence verse of Sri Vaishnavism. Sarvatamam Paritya. So, Ramayana is an explanation of that. Now we're going to move on to not just Krishna's words, but Krishna's activities. And in Krishna's activities, and his personality and his character, Srimad Bhagavatam, the graduate study. And in the graduate study, we're going now in sequence, but the second verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Dharma Projita Kaita Votra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. So in the initial declaration is this book, <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavatam is kicking out Projita Kaitava, cheating religion, or religion that's not Paradharma. It's just focusing on Paradharma. And in the conclusion, chapter 13 of Canto 12, the last section of the Bhagavatam, there's this declaration by the author Vyasadeva that it's the chanting of the holy name that can relieve one of all reactions of sin. It's not so different than the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita, but it's specific, the chanting of the holy name. So it's really good if we could have this nice policy for our kirtaniers that they chant eight rounds. I like that policy. That's Bhagavatam. And then comes Chaitanya Charitamrita. And it's very confidential, yet it's disclosed to everyone. And people that don't have faith in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu aren't going to understand it. But those that have faith in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can at least get some understanding. And in the first Adi Leela, 
of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Adi Lila, chapter 3, I will come to teach the process of chanting by practicing myself, so the acharya of chanting. And of course, there's a purpose in chanting. It's already mentioned at the end of the Bhagavatam. Free one from all sins, but far more than free one from all sins. It takes one far beyond freeing oneself from sins or reactions to sins. It awakens love of God. We had this nice verse. That's the teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's to, to achieve love of God. And in the conclusion, in Antilila, the final chapter of Antilila, Mahaprabhu is being described by Krishna Das Kaviraj as going mad in love of God. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu forgot himself throughout the entire day and night, being merged in an ocean of ecstatic love for Krishna. I mean, the culmination of chanting very nicely is we, we're not going to get to the stage of Mahabhava that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited because it's unique to him, but the this, this stage of ecstatic love of God or spontaneous love of God or Raghunuga Bhakti or Raga Mark or whatever you, different terminologies. That's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching by example and then the, the Acharyas following him experienced it and wrote about it in their writings. And that's what we're blessed with. Now, the plan for this morning's class is again just kind of like a high level 30,000 feet looking down at you know what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave so it's not details at all but we spent just as we've spent one yatra visiting places from Udupi on we spent one one yatra leaving Jagannath Puri going south and coming back around to Udupi it took 20 days and now another part. So this is a review of what we heard. We visited many places. And at those many places we heard the, the, what, what Lord Chaitanya did in those places and what the response from what he did in those places. But one of the major things was he was distributing love of God through the chanting of the Holy Name. And he did many other things and many other things. But the essence of it was to remove coverings and awaken love of God. And he did that in unique ways according to different audiences. So we're going to focus on just four of those categories of ways in which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu interacted with people. The essence was awakening love of God by removal of coverings. So there's four categories we'll be discussing. People in general, chanting of the holy name. Scholarly people, teachings. Vedanta Sutra with Sarvabhama Bhattacharya and Prakashananda Saraswati. And they were also delivered. They became Vaishnavas, although they were, you know, in another category than Vaishnava in their outlook and their convictions. And then there was the experience of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu giving teachings about the very special position of the love of the residents of Vrindavan in his discussions with Ramananda Roy and in his discussions with Venkatabhata. And at the same time, elevating his brother and his son to a very elevated, very exalted positions of Vaishnavism. And then finally, which leads into something we're going to be discussing much more tomorrow, is his, the, the merciful nature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this particular case with his servant Krishna Das, who got bamboozled by bad association. So we hear about those four categories of 
in principle, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu removing coverings and giving the mercy of love of God by his own example, starting with the entry point is the chanting of the holy name. Now, the, it, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left Jagannath Puri, he was already in a state of ecstasy. And many of you know from Chaitanya Charitamrita, the verse that he sang as he was walking with his arms raised and dancing, dancing. So you can say with me, Krishna, 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 hey. Krishna, 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 hey. Rama, Raghava, Rama, Raghava, Rama, Raghava, Rakshamam. Krishna, Keshava, Krishna, Keshava, Krishna, Keshava, Rakshamam. So he, arms up raised in a state of ecstasy. People had never seen anything like this, not only seen it, but the, you know, the ecstasy. And so they came from wherever they were, drawn to the personality of Godhead, who's experiencing ecstatic love for Krishna, distributing ecstatic love for Krishna. And when they came, they raised their arms and they joined him in chanting. And then he would ask them personally, chant or say, Hari, Hari. And they would reply, Hari, Hari. And he would say again, say, Hari, Hari. And they would say, Hari. And in this way, they became ecstatic. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, seeing the transformation, he came and embraced them and invested in them, in his ecstatic love. And they wanted to come with him. And he said, no, go back to your village and you transmit the same thing that you've received to others. And so they did. And when they went back to their village, when they saw others, they said, Hari, Hari, and the people would respond, Hari, Hari, and again and again. And they became also ecstatic because it wasn't just mechanical, it was ecstatic chanting. And then when those people in that village met other people that came from other villages, they did the same, say, Hari, Hari, and they said, and in this way, Love for Krishna was spread far and wide. And Krishna Das Kaviraj says, as I've described here, please understand, for the two years that Mahaprabhu traveled through South India, this was his program. So it's not repeated again and again, but it's part of his mercy giving. We're going to hear, be hearing a lot about mercy giving because it's the kind of love that he was giving. We'll hear some more, but not right now. A, 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 a preview. Bhakti Mino Thakur, in one of his writings, describes that the internal potency, and he uses the different terms, there's Parashakti and Swarup Shakti and Antaranga Shakti and by the Lord's internal potency, he makes access to him and the spiritual world available. And there's three categories he identifies, Aishwarya, Madhurya, and Odarya. Mahaprabhu gave the Odarya feature. So that's what we're describing. It's mercy given freely to anyone, everyone, without any consideration. Anyone, everyone, without any consideration. Receiving that which he was giving was all that's required. Those persons that were empowered, they received mercy. In order to give mercy, you have to receive mercy. Receive mercy of the Supreme Lord, in this case, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or the representatives of 
the personality of Godhead in the form of teachers or spiritual masters or exemplary persons. They can be very simple people. They can be very simple people but have received mercy. And if there's willingness to receive that bhakti shakti, because it's directly spoken in Chaitanya Charitamrita, you can't distribute Krishna bhakti without bhakti shakti. Krishna shakti vina nahi tara pravartana. You have to receive it to give it. And then anyone can become a distributor of it if you have to, if you can receive it sincerely and, of course, cultivate it. In addition to going along the road and chanting, sometimes because he was a sannyasi, if that scream happens again, somebody can go downstairs and do the needful. He would go door to door and gather alms. Just like we heard Ramanuja Chari. It's just part of the order of sannyas does like that. So as he would go requesting alms, he would also ask people to chant Hari. And he would give glories of the personality of God. It's same as Ramanuja Chari has said. I go door to door, not just to get something to eat, but to give the glories of the Supreme Lord. In case Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's case, it was encouraging them and requesting them to chant. And Chaitanya Charitamrita says, in all quarters of India, this South India tour was propagating this Yuga Dharma, which he came into this world to do. Now what do you do when there's an unfavorable situation? According to the, the Prabhupada's purports, you go to a favorable situation. Now sometimes you may try to do your best even if it's an unfavorable situation. But the unfavorable situation, it's not in Prabhupada's commentary, my experience is, it's largely due to twisted leadership. Because simple leadership can be encouraging and there's some parts of the world where it's banned. It's like you're risking your life or you're risking something big time. The risking is okay, but ideal is to go where it's favorable. And fortunately, in some of those places where leadership is so restrictive, it works the opposite. People that are sincere are frustrated with the restriction and they want freedom. When they get spiritual freedom, it's, it's dynamic first-hand experience. Next, a second category of mercy that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave was mercy to householders. Some persons are householders. And one of those householders, by name, exemplifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's interactions with others was Kurma Brahman. And then later was Vasudev, the leper. So by association with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Kurma Brahman became so inspired, he wanted to leave his home, leave his household, leave his duties, and just travel and be with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Kijai. And Mahaprabhu was not happy with that. Don't speak like that. Remain at home. Chant the holy name always. And instruct others to chant the holy name and to follow Krishna's instructions. Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, the celebrated verse, become a spiritual master and save the land.
If you follow this, your materialistic life at home will not obstruct your spiritual advancement. Indeed, we'll again meet here, or you'll never lose my company. It's a nice instruction for householders. There are a few householders. The, the recommendation is trash it. That's not the recommendation. Chuck it. Get rid of your responsibilities and your family and your home and your this and that. And just walk away and karma sannyas. That's not what he recommended. Stane is to talk kruti gatam That's what he recommended. And the same in his talk with Ramananda Roy. Stay in your position and hear topics of Krishna from qualified persons. And practice Krishna bhakti nicely. And this way, your worldly life won't be an obstruction to your spiritual life. It would rather be an instrument or a vehicle of how to move in that way. And when he cured Vasudeva the leper, same instruction. No surprise. Same instruction. With one additional instruction that was meant for him to become free from the potential of pride, from getting the special, special, triple special mercy from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be cured of an incurable disease, leprosy with worms hanging out of his body. Yuck. And cured, he can get it proud. So his additional recommendation was remain free from pride, remain humble always. Chant incessantly so that you'll become free from the, the pride of receiving special, special, triple special mercy. Pride can easily enter even if you weren't a leper and got cured. Pride can come from anything. Become a good Madunga player. <laughs> or become a good singer. Or become an anything. You know, do something. Do, uh, th th those persons who organized this yatra. We owe a great deal of gratitude to them because behind the scenes, they've been doing a zillion things. I was told yesterday evening, 80% of the programs that they've organized, they couldn't participate in because they were busy where the next place is, organizing the next place and so forth and so on. So they could become proud. I made this sacrifice. It's, pride is easy. Here's a little Prabhupada story. Then we'll go back to Chaitanya Cherry Tamrit in a moment. Prabhupada said he learned about pride when he was a young boy. He, he and his father, his father was taking him from Calcutta to Jagannath Puri. There's a direct train line that goes from Calcutta to Puri or Bhubaneswar, whatever it is. And during the train ride, from time to time, there's stops. The train comes to a complete halt, and some people get off the train and go buy things in the, you know, the platform. The Prabhupada got down from the train, and he saw a very poor couple. They had a burlap bag, and in the burlap bag, there was discarded wood, like firewood or you know, something wood, and they were very meticulously placing their wealth from this place to that place. You know, like making it look nice so they could carry it safely. And Prabhupada said, from that I could understand, even a pauper is proud of his penny. I mean, learning lessons from nature. Even a pauper is proud of his penny. What to speak of somebody that has two pennies? or has wealth, or has the fruits of piety. We talked about this, I'm just repeating it. It's real easy to get an obstacle on the path of bhakti by being a pious person. 
It's, it, can, it can be an obstacle. That was the first obstacle of Hanuman crossing. The fruits of piety becoming attached and complacent because now I've, I'm, I'm entitled to be an enjoyer of the fruits of my piety. After all, I'm a pious person. So having fruits of piety is the way it should be, right? And being the enjoyer of the fruits of piety is part of pride and foolishness. It's part of the trap of, of the material experience. So Kurma and Vasudev the leper learned their lesson from instruction from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, part of his giving of his mercy. The third example is in certain cases, like in the case with Ramananda Roy, there was a very elevated exchange. And a very elevated exchange took place in part because of the recommendation of Sarvabhava Bhattacharya. One piece of information Sarvabhava Bhattacharya said, when, it, when you travel in South India, be sure to have some interaction with Ramananda Roy. Because before, I thought that Ramananda Roy was this silly sentimentalist talking about higher spiritual emotions and things like that. You know, what about Vedanta Sutra? That's real stuff. He's a spiritually elevated person. You'll be very happy when you meet him. So they met by the Lord's arrangement. And when they met, it was done in a private place because you know, when they met in a public place, people couldn't understand the emotional exchange between one another, embracing and tears and shivering of their bodies. and They couldn't understand it. So seeing that the ministers and other persons who were with Ramananda Roy, because he was a government officer, let's meet in a quiet place in the evening. So they met. The first exhibition from Ramananda Roy was two things. Humility, stating, I'm a nobody. I'm a shudra by birth, and you're giving your mercy to me. And that you gave your mercy to by to Sarvamobhatacharya indicates you're a very merciful personality. And now, again, you're giving your mercy to me. So honoring others who have received Lord Chaitanya's mercy, feeling oneself unfit to receive Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And then, lo and behold, what does Mahaprabhu, role reversal, he's the sannyasi from a Brahmana family and highly elevated, even by worldly standards, asking Ramananda Roy to, to state the purpose of life and the means to achieve it. That's an interesting place to start a conversation. Meet somebody for the first time and that's what you discuss. What's the goal of life and the means to achieve it? And one by one by one by one by one, he starts, one of the ones he starts with, we're gonna discuss this, I think, tomorrow morning. We mentioned it already. Madhvacharya, in his statements of what's the goal of life, we're going to hear it this afternoon also, is Varnashram system with worship of the deity form of the Lord and offering the fruits of your work, you know, Varnashram system. Follow your own prescribed duty and offer the fruits unto Krishna, and this can lead you to Vaikuntha which is the goal for Madhvas. We'll hear this afternoon Ma Mahaprabhu's discussion on that point. When he had the discussion with Ramananda Roy, he simply said, go further. We'll cover it this afternoon. Go further. So he went further, went further, and further and further and further and beyond the point where Ramananda Roy had ever spoken. And he said, you're, you're a ventriloquist. You're having me, you're speaking through me. And I'm saying things that I've never said before. 
because you're using me as your instrument, but that's, that's nice to be an instrument. And where the conversation went was not only Krishna Prema, but Vraja Prema. And Vraja Prema in the highest form is, as we heard already three times, that mood of the gopis. Vrajavadu Vargena Sakalpita, the highest form, the most, most exalted type of worship amongst the various types of worship is that of the gopis. And it goes on and on and on. It's just describing the love of Srimati Radharani for Krishna. So Mahaprabhu was giving his mercy in that way to Ramananda Roy because he was so qualified. And he did not only that, but with Venkatabhata. In the home of Venkatabhata, chief priest in Sri Rangam, he did it in a different way, very different way. But you know, the, the, the goddess of fortune underwent austerities to enter the rasa dance of Krishna. How's this? She's the most chaste. Why is she leaving the side of Narayana and going to Krishna to be part of the rasa dance of Krishna? And the answer, you know the answer. The answer was, there's no difficulty. She's not being unchaste because Krishna and Narayana are the same. Krishna and Narayana are the same. Lord Chaitanya said, very well. Krishna and Narayana are the same, but she couldn't enter the Rasa dance. So how are they the same? And not only that, she underwent austerities. Lakshmi underwent austerities. And not only that, she couldn't enter even after austerities and being the goddess of fortune. So could you explain? Vingatabhata said, I can't, but I think you can. Can you please explain? So Lord Chaitanya was introducing the mood of the love of the residents of Vrindavan as being the most exalted love, a way of worshiping Krishna. The residents of Vrindavan, and particularly the gopis. Even because in Sri Sampradaya, similar to Madhva Sampradaya, the position of the goddess of fortune is topmost. Now, we won't go into how this and, and, and that one conceive of the goddess of fortune, Sri. That's another conversation. But he was giving to Venkatabhata, and by that exchange and the four months that he stayed, the brother of Venkatabhata and the son of Venkatabhata became very exalted followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with full immersion in the topmost, the Odarya feature the Madhurya and Odarya feature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the mercy-giving Mahaprabhu. So depending upon audiences, he interacted differently. And we also, finally, the special way that he showed mercy to the, the, the one individual who was traveling with him, Krishna Das, a Brahmana, who was assigned to him, simple, obedient, you know, faithful, he'll be with you the whole time, whatever your needs are, your carrying of your water pot and changing of your clothes and so forth and so on. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, Krishna Das fell into bad association, which sometimes happens. A nice devotee can sometimes through bad association, become corrupted. It happens. And that's what happened to Krishna Das. In the association of the Bhattaharis, he fell victim to the Bhattahari way of life of becoming charmed by exchanges with women. And when that came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's attention, of course he's omniscient, he went straight to the Bhattahari community. Why are you keeping my Brahmana assistant? I'm a sannyasi, and so are you. Yet, you are purposely giving me pain. And I do not see any good logic 
in this. He didn't do anything, just like, why are you doing this? So the Bataharis, they were the violent type. There was some question about what to do when uh, not, some obstacle comes that's mode of ignorance. That's what the Bataharis. Now, if you're Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, here's what you do. And if you're not, you have, another, have to have another option in your menu. But they, they started charging him with weapons. So the weapons started chopping the Bataharis and cutting them to pieces. And the remaining ones that didn't get cut to pieces, they ran for their life. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu grabbed his brahmachari by the hair. Now let's assume it was a sika, that much hair at least. And dragged him back. And he was very sorry that he had fallen prey to bad association. And Mahaprabhu was, you know, kind to him till he got back to Puri. And then he showed another feature than apparently than, than kindness. He said, you can go wherever you like. Your, your service is over. See you later. Much later. And Krishna Das was smashed. And the devotees didn't talk, try to talk Mahaprabhu out of it. They just instead, they figured out another service that Krishna Das could do. Keep him engaged in service. So the service given to him was to go to Navadvip and form the devotees. Mahaprabhu has come back from his South India travel. So they were very happy, he had a big festival, Mahaprabhu was back and they came to join him in Jagannath Puri, having not seen him for so long. So mercy, summary. Mahaprabhu's South India travel was the fulfillment of his pledge to teach by him, his doing it himself and giving mercy so that the coverings can be removed, the coverings of different categories of persons in this age of Kali. We have to list the categories again. But different categories, but different tactics, but the same chanting of the holy names of the Lord and restoring the position of meaningful service to the personality of Godhead. And that in turn brought Mahaprabhu to this place that he visited according to Chaitanya Charitamrita, took, had darshan of the deity, danced before the deity, and carried on to the next place that we're going this afternoon. So there's a little simple summary of all that we've been done, we've been doing for the past three yatras connected with Mahaprabhu's South India tour. Let's see if there's some discussion. How are we doing with time? It's 11.20 because we got messed up with our schedule. 10 more minutes. Huh? 10 more minutes. 10 minutes. I see a hand way in the back. I see a hand towards the front, right behind you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Go ahead. Okay. So Maharaj, uh, the question is, as we heard Bhagavad Gita. Hold it a little further from your mouth because the volume is too much. Or can you fix the volume on the speaker? Go ahead, speak. So in Bhagavad Gita, as we have heard about Yoga Nashta, so that's why Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita again to Arjuna. So after that, Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken, but the actual message in terms of application and all, uh, also you have mentioned about Namalwar in some long back in a lecture. Namalwar appeared around 35, 34 years after Krishna disappeared, something yes. like that. Yes. So that means the message of Bhakti was there. Yes. But, but when Shankaracharya appeared and the yeah. maximum people could attain up to Brahman realization or so. So if you think in terms of Yoga Nashta and if you think about what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave Prema Pumartha Mahan, so uh, going up to that extent, 
means seems like that was not even up to that stage till the time mahaprabhu came no madhvacharya madhavendra puri madhavendra puri ishwar puri by mercy of the supreme lord they manifested that now what should what's the punch line therefore what thing like as chaitanya mahaprabhu gave golokere prem dhan and also the achinta bheda veda tatva which exactly matches with brahma samhita message bhagavad gita message Say slower. is there some message what of brahma samhita's message as well as bhagavad gita's message of chaitanya mahaprabhu's achinta bheda aveda tatva in terms of jiva in terms of supreme lord in terms of relationship everything gets aligned with bhagavad gita brahma samhita everything so that comes to the uh, the current uh, understanding of vaidhi uh, gauriya vishnu uh, society so from that perspective this is a complicated question can you keep it simple what's the question simple 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 for the simple keep it simple i'm saying uh, the yoga nashta as we heard in bhagavad gita in terms of application we see that gradually as if its evolu- evolution is happening starting from previously in yeah. both this era it was not there the and evolution and evolution both yeah and that too it seems like as you also have said which i was not aware of i knew that shankaracharya was sent by lord uh, for doing his yes, uh, purpose yes. but he mentioned that he went to uttar vadri to get the guidance from uh, 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 vyas vasudev and subsequently madhvacharya also got this so it seems like everything is controlled by lord in due course of time things are getting congratulations open and open therefore surrender to him things are moving by his plan and for example he's known as the hidden avatar chana avatar because he doesn't disclose his identity as the supreme lord he keeps it hidden as a de- as a devotee of the lord so at the same time he's giving the greatest because he's munificent maha varanyaya so you're just repeating something it's not a puzzle he's doing what he does and shankara did what he did and madhva did what he did and ramanuja did what he did under the authorization of the the bigger plan of the supreme lord because because there's all types of living entities there's all types of living entities the lord came as buddha and then had to correct that problem then we had to correct that problem and then we had to correct that problem so it's it's but there's all living entities and some persons have shelter over here and some persons have shelter over there he's providing he's reciprocating according to living entities but his utmost desire is awakening love of god not just attaining moksha awakening love of god and there's different lenses we've been through this several times different lenses through which one can see the same scripture one reads this the other reads that there's this saying you probably heard i read the bible they read the bible day and night one reads red one reads black and the other one reads white you know it's this the same text but they read different things from the same text and it's not just the bible it's anything scripture but anything so that so the association that one has means everything and how we receive 
And that's going to be, or hopefully going to be tomorrow. How do we apply what we've received from this yatra and the, the sangha of Gaudiya Vaishnavas that we've been blessed with? Something else. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, when uh, Rupa Goswami and Sanatam Goswami were uh, uh, ministers in uh, the, uh, under Muslim rulers, they appealed to Lord Chaitanya for uh, protection. And uh, Lord Chaitanya sent one message, a cryptic message, uh, giving example of the housewife having a paramour. The yes, same, yes, the, yes, the, yes. The, the same instruction Srila Prabhupada also repeats in the introduction of Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Uh, I, I, many years uh, I have thought, but I couldn't understand. If possible, could you explain? Sure. Thanks for such a, a, a sublime, straightforward, simple question. Supposing there's someone, you know, good pr someone that's gotten somehow deviated. And he has um, the association of a prostitute. And he's married, but he's contemplating, I have to cover my tracks so my wife won't know I want to go to the prostitute. So like that, like that mentality, I want the Supreme Lord. In the case of the, the, the two, or th three brothers, but he gave a similar instruction to Raghunath Das Goswami. The words were different, but similar instruction. Behave normal. Act as if everything's okay, like a man might act if he's got a paramour. And all the while in his mind anticipating. Similarly, do your duties, you, not just Rupa and Sanatana Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami, do your duties as if you're a worldly person. But don't be a worldly person. Internally cultivate anticipation of the opportunity to be with Krishna in a loving reciprocation of service with him. And in time, it will happen because that's your inner contemplation. That's the understanding. Is that clear? Okay, good. Now, the bell just rang. It's now 10.30, 11.30. So I think we I see one hand. Let's do let's do one more and then we're gonna end. Go ahead. What no, you've got the microphone. This this devotee in the front had his hand up first. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my blow senses. Jaya Dave, do it. Gag. Go ahead. Paradharma chanting Hare Krishna. So, Sarvadharma and Parichacha is a, a prerequisite to do Paradharma. Are you asking, is that 1866 verse a lead in to Paradharma or, or is it Paradharma? Is it a prerequisite to do Paradharma like? Chanting Hare Krishna. I'm not clear what your question is. Are you clear what your question is? Uh, is it a prerequisite? Means, uh, oh, without, without taking full shelter of Krishna, how are you going to get to Krishna? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, you take full shelter. Now, how long is it going to take you to get there? That's how long it's going to take you to get there. That's how long. However long that is, that's how long. It doesn't have to be. It can be however long it takes. Lifetimes, it may take lifetimes. But that's the principle. To get to Krishna, you have to take shelter of Krishna and leave aside other things. Okay? 
Are we ready for our announcements? So the uh, updated schedule is something like